Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Corley with Figure It Out Productions. The following video is part of our Quick Shoot series and is intended to aid the Dreamcast and gaming community. Hey everybody, uh, Adam here. Uh, recently I did a video uh, where I unboxed my new Star Wars Edition Xbox 360, and in that video I said I would show you how to do data transferring. And so, I'm here to show you that. Um, very quickly, the concept of data transferring. If you have multiple 360s, such as myself, um, when you have the older ones and you go to the newer ones, you want to move all your data over. So let's go, I'll use the first ones as an example. Uh, I bought this one when it came out, and it had a 20 gigabyte hard drive. Oh my god, 20 gigabytes! And then later, um, they decided to release the Elite, which is this one, uh, with to help like compete with the PS3 a little bit better. Uh, it's in black, which is basically the reason I got it. It had a 120 gigabyte hard drive instead of a 20 gigabyte hard drive, and it had an HDMI port. So I was like, okay, uh, I want that. So I went ahead and got it, and then I was like, well, what do I do about all my files and saves and stuff on here? I want them over here. How do I do that? And Microsoft at the time wasn't doing anything with like cloud saves or anything like that. So they were like, all right, all right, we got you guys, we got you. So they released um, this cable, which is a data transfer cable. This cable was actually free if you had both systems. You just had to give them your serial number, and they were like, oh, okay, there you go, we'll mail that to you. So that was nice. Um, in short, what it does is it you will connect your older hard drive to one end of it, and then connect this to the new end of it, and then when you turn on the new one, it goes like, oh, hey, I see your hard drive there. Do you want me to transfer all that stuff off to your new one? And you go, yeah, I do. That would kick ass. Now, this is a method that I think most people are familiar with, but there's a couple problems with this. Uh, one, it uh, formats the drive after you're done with it. It doesn't copy everything over. It moves it over. It's gone. You know, like That data is just, all of a sudden, this hard drive is blank, and your old 360 is blank. It's as if it was never used, which kind of sucks. I don't like that. I, I would kind of like the idea that I could, you know, play, uh, I could resume my game saves on either system. And granted, I'd have to update the save files, you know, and you could do something like that with a thumb drive. But I would, you know, basically to have my profile on both consoles and have my game saves and as much DLC as I could fit on there, that's what I would want to do. But this method doesn't allow for that. So, uh, I decided I wanted to do it myself. I wanted to figure out how to do that. So, I got this thing, uh, which I attached to the older hard drives. It's a thing that was released for the 360, not by Microsoft. It has a USB port in the back. This is how I got my first exposure to this. There's a program called Explorer 360. starts with an X. Um, which you're going to need if you want to do this. So go ahead and Google search that now while I'm ranting and rambling. Um, uh, Explorer 360, it is best used on Windows 7 uh, because this whole method works the best with Windows 7. Um, if you have Vista, it would probably work, although I don't know why the hell you'd have Vista. If you have XP, that would work too. Probably a little bit more complicated because you'd have to go manually install drivers and stuff, but I'm sure you could get it to work. Um, if you have a Mac, as far as I know, you're shit out of luck. Um, and if you have Linux, you can probably get to work if you use, like, Wine or something to run the .exe file, but, you know, basically this is recommended towards PC uh, Windows 7 based users. Um, so you have a data transfer kit, and you, or you could get the newer kit, which I highly recommend getting the newer kit, because this one was free, and this one was only like $10, and it, it's, the reason they're so cheap is they're designed as a one-time use thing, as far as Microsoft is concerned. You just transfer all your data, and this thing is junk at that point, which is not true. Um, you can use it to connect your hard drives to your computer, as I just said. And a bonus feature that Microsoft only recently allowed for is you can use these to act as additional hard drives. So, for example, if I was like, if I really just decided to, I found like a you know a two dollar twenty gigabyte hard drive, I was like, shit, two bucks to get an extra twenty gigabytes of space to this three sixty. I'll do that. You'd have your transfer kit, and it would just act as a device to make this an external hard drive. So that's another bonus feature that of these things that they don't really talk about. Um, so that is an option. But what we're going to use it for is to connect it to the computer. And I'm going to do that with these newer 360s because that's, you know, I got the newest one, so I have to upgrade it anyway. So, but again, this would work on these two. Um, so what you're going to do in this case is you would take, you know, your newer hard drive. And like I said, this cable, the newer cable, the one that comes in this box and looks like this, will work with these hard drives or these hard drives. It doesn't matter. 
Although it is worth noting that inside of these hard drives, they're just the, beyond their case, is the exact same SATA hard drive. Um, I've seen other people try to do data transferring, and instead of using this cable, they break the cases open and like swap them, and then they like have to figure out how to juggle to get them in there and stuff. I find that method completely idiotic when you have this cable in existence and it's for such a reasonable price. I just don't know why the hell you would break the cases. That's just retarded to me. But anyway, personal feelings aside, uh, what you do at this point is you connect your uh, 360 hard drive to this cable. Now, bear in mind, this is not for the newest console you have. It's for your second newest or second biggest or whatever you want to do. Um, and you'll connect this to your computer and what you're going to do is run this Explorer 360 program. It's uh, provided it's already installed the drivers and all that, which again, if you're using Windows 7, it'd be a snap. Um, you'll run this program, which is a very simple executable file, doesn't require any registration, it's completely freeware, it doesn't even require an installation, it's just an executable that you can just click and go. Um, so it will recognize the drive once you tell it to look for it. And it'll be like, oh, okay, I found your drive. What do you want to do? Now, you have a few options. You can cherry pick files if you're really into the hacking thing. But for this immediate purpose, we're just going to talk about backing up the drive. So what you will also need is a hard drive space on your computer that can uh, that is big enough to hold all of this. And in this case, we're talking 250 gigabytes. Now, I want to make this crystal clear to people out there. I don't care if you only have like 10 gigabytes on here that is used, you still need 250 gigabytes of empty space on your computer somewhere. Because it will fill that 10 gigabytes you have and will fill the rest of that 240 with dummy files. Regardless of what, how much space you have on here, it's going to create a 250 gigabyte file. So in my case, I have this external hard drive here, this uh, Western Digital one that I've connected. and. <clears throat> I will just back up all my data to that, okay? Because that's a 500 gigabyte drive. It can totally handle it. There's nothing else on there. All right, so once it's all connected and you tell it to go ahead, I'm going to say, all right, uh, find the drive, uh, go ahead and back up everything, and here's where I want to back it up to. Now it's backing it up. This process of backing it up, by the way, will take a long time. So go ahead and relax. It's going to take forever. Just deal with that. It's fine. It, it, just be patient. It'll work. Um, so once that's eventually done, at this point, what you have done is simply backed up this hard drive. That's all you've done. Nothing is removed from this drive. It's simply copied. It's safe. Nothing has obviously happened to this drive either. Okay? That's where we are at this point in time. Now, once that's all done, you go ahead and tell it to disconnect from your computer, and you take the cable. You don't even have to unplug it from this. Then you're going to have this new 360 all powered up and fired on, and you're going to connect this to the new 360. And you're going to use Microsoft's built-in method of transferring all your data. All right? um, it will copy everything over. It will eventually wipe everything off of there. And then this new hard drive, in this case, the 320 gigabyte hard drive, will have all of your data. But then we go, oh no, what happened to this hard drive? This sucks. This 360 is worthless now. For the moment, yes. But once this is all done, you'll take your cable back and you'll plug this back in your computer. And then once again, you'll use Explorer 360. Now this time, you will uh, restore the image you created of all your backed up data. And that will take a long time too. It'll just, you just hit restore, you find the file, and then it'll put it back on here. All the data you just copied or cloned off of this will go right back on it. And that'll take a while, like I said. But once it's done, all of your data will be back. It'll be as if this hard drive never had anything done to it. So your 360 will be all good again. And this new one will have all that data as well. Pretty awesome, right? There's a side note, by the way. If you have two hard drives that are the same size, like if you have two 250 gigabyte drives, you can't just rip the data from one and then transfer that same data back over to the other one and then have two of the exact same drive. It doesn't work that way. You'd have to rip this one to your computer, then use the Xbox to um, take all this data and copy it over to here. Then you could restore this drive again. If you try to do it where you just rip this data to your like computer's hard drive and then put that data onto this one, this one will not work. So don't do that. Now, some might go, well, what's the point of that? Um, because you need your profile. 
in order for any of this to matter. Now, some people may honestly not care about this, and then I don't know why you're watching the video. But if you're here watching the video, you probably care at least a little bit. Um, my goal was to simply have all my data shared throughout all my drives. That way I could, you know, interchange at any point if I need to, and I wouldn't have to, like, replay games all over again. I wouldn't have to re-download files. You know, I wouldn't have to do any of that crap. All of it would already be there. Um, that's what the point of copying all this data is. But in my case, I also use a thumb drive. This one came with Star Wars Force Unleashed 2, actually. And I keep my profile on here. So at any time, I put this in any one of my consoles. And when I turn it on, as far as the console knows, it's the exact same console. It's got my user info that's all on here, all my profile stuff. And then it's got all my game saves and it's got all my DLC. Now, uh, that's awesome. They're all essentially the same. Now, granted, the size of the hard drives is different. So, like, this one can't possibly hold all the DLC that the other ones have. You know, I haven't filled this one yet, which means vicariously I haven't filled either of these. Um... But, uh, yeah, that, that's a pretty cool benefit of doing this. Um, now, the, of course, the inherent drawback is if, say, this becomes my dominant 360, and I'm just going to continue with Force Unleashed here. If I were to beat Force Unleashed 2 on this 360 and this 360 only, it's not like it magically just tr trickles down and f goes into the other ones. I would have to uh, copy my new game save onto this, and then I could manually go back and put it into these and then copy it back over and just update them if I want to. But the point is to just do a big mass update in one direction. And speaking of one direction, this only works in one direction. You can't take a 320 gigabyte hard drive, back it up, and then put all its data on a 20 gigabyte hard drive. That's impossible. If you understand math, you'll understand that this can only go one way. Um, if you were so inclined and you wanted to take specific files off of one of these drives and then clone it over, you could do that with uh, Explorer 360. That's a much more complicated thing that I'm not going to be doing here. Um, the other benefit to this uh, is really the Xbox Originals game saves. Um, most Xbox 360 games now, uh, you can copy their data freely without, like, you know, they have, I don't know, if you, you can look at a 360, and when you find a data file, it gives you, like, three options. It gives you, like, move, copy, and delete. Moving means it gets it off your system. Deleting means it's gone forever. And copying means exactly what it sounds like. It's copying. Um, most 360 data files will support the concept of copying. Not all of them, though. For example, uh, Dead or Alive 4, for whatever reason, its game saves are not copyable. Um, so that's a, a reason to use this data transfer method because when you connect this to a computer and use Explorer, it will copy that. It will copy everything, which is awesome because then your D Dead or Alive 4 appears on both systems. Um, but Xbox Originals, none of them are copyable. It's either delete or that's it. They don't even have a move option. So uh, unless you do the data transfer thing, then they will allow you to move it, but it deletes it all. So the reason you backed it all up, of course, was to preserve it. And now my original Xbox data is on both consoles, which is awesome because I don't have to re-beat the games all over again. Um, now, some people may not care because it's the original Xbox, but the, there are 360 games that have the same problem. And, I, and this way you also you know, don't have to re-download everything. Even if you like have the licenses and you paid for it and they don't give you any crap about it, you still have to spend many hours downloading and updating all over again when this just... You just don't have to do that. So that's the reason uh, I highly recommend doing this, and I hope this helps anyone who is looking into this. Thanks for watching.